Across the globe, what's delicious is questionable. One man's trash is another man's culinary treasure. Why would you eat that? Excuse me. On today's menu, the Japanese have had their qualms with the sea. Oh, 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 hell no, that giant squid is back! But one tiny monster they can't get enough of is the spiny sea urchin with its deliciously goopy insides. Now a funny thing about the Japanese, when they say you're eating the roe of a fish, they usually mean the eggs. But in the case of sea urchin roe, they refer to the gonads, both male and female. They're almost indistinguishable except for a slight differentiation in color. Originally, it was much too runny to be eaten in the nigiri style, which is an oblong mound of sushi rice with a little wasabi and the uni laid on top. But the clever culinary contortionists in the sushi trade took care of this runny little problem. Stop, stop, stop! What if we add a little lemon juice? Oh, lemon juice, yeah. yeah. That'll yeah. tighten it right up! Idea. Most of the uni you'll currently find at sushi joints around the United States is thanks to that tart little citrus fruit. Sea urchin aficionados love its aroma, and its ocean smell is a huge ow. part of the appeal. Ow. To preserve this aroma, many sushi chefs ow, avoid ow. using seaweed to wrap it because they feel it fights the delicate odor of the uni. Instead, those chefs wrap it in extremely thin slices of cucumber, preserving the scent of the ocean. Beachy, oceany, uni, do you love the ocean? Smell like it. Preparing a sea urchin is easy. First, set aside a container of salt water. You'll need it to rinse your uni later on. Avoiding the spines, you cut open the shell, revealing the insides of the urchin. Then you delicately scrape the insides of the urchin into the salt water mixture, doing your best to avoid the inedible brown guts, aiming only for the sweet, tasty, bright orange gonads. And then splash with lemon and pop on rice with a touch of wasabi for nigiri-style sushi. But how does it taste to the uninitiated? It's time to feed the office. Yeah, they actually take the, they you want some sea urchin gonads? You want some sea urchin gonads? Not really. You're good? Sea I'm urchin gonads? Good. You sure? I'm very good, thanks. Okay. Oh <laughs> Look at that. What is that stuff that's on top of it? It's runny. Are those taste buds? What part of the sea urchin is this? I'll let you know after you put it in your mouth. Three, two, one. Is it better than balut? Worse than balut. Let's put it in. Oh my god. Oh, how like dead jellyfish look on the sand. That's kind of what I think that would taste like. Hmm, yes. But why would you eat that? Well, that is the question. For thousands of years, some Japanese thought it was an aphrodisiac. But the ocean going echinoderm contains a cannabinoid known as ananandamide. Whew, yikes. So digging into the gooey stuff can actually have a similar effect to that medical stuff your nephew buys for his anxiety. So be careful. Uni can be a gateway sushi. Steven, what are you doing? I'm so high on uni. No! <laughs> also, uni is lower in fat and calories than many of the other kinds of sushi, but high in protein, with each ounce of sea urchin sushi containing about 3.2 grams of protein, which is more than half of what an egg contains which makes reaching for uni a great choice for melting that muffin top. Just don't try to grab it barehanded. Click subscribe and come back next week for more Why Would You Eat That? Mm, yes, subscribe.